So the best thing about an ecosystem tank is that you can just set it up, sit back and just watch it. You don't have to do anything to it for like a month at least, other than some water top offs of course, because you know, you will get evaporation. But that is it, literally that's it. So in the last video, we got up to the point where we planted all the plants that are gonna be coming out of the water. We call them immersed plants. I've covered the whole thing up with this cling film or shrink wrap just to keep the moisture in because I ran out of time. But you know, today is a new day and we can plant all the plants. Plant, 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 plant. There's a, how do you say that about sounding like an absolute moron the submerged plants are now going to be going in so at the moment it looks like a really cool sort of beach didn't it it looks like that film with leonardo dicaprio the beach oh, life's a beach anyway we can get this off now look at oh no i'm ripping up all the hardscape here as well let's get those plants in <laughs> that sounded really creepy Right, so I'm going to start with these plants. I've shown you them before, but I'll show them again quickly for those of you only just sort of starting to watch the series. So we've got Altonanthra Mineki Mini, which is like a really good sort of pinky red plant. It actually looks like this here, which is so cool. And also under this light, it looks like this here. So yeah, it's a really nice plant. Give some more details at the side. So I've got like three pots of that because over this side is like a bigger island if you like so i'm going to put more on this section and then you need to obviously put a similar plant or the same plant sorry but a smaller amount on this side how about if i got rid of all this misting wouldn't it hang on yeah so yeah on this side loads in that section that section underneath there just for the red sort of pockets keeping it in pockets rather than sort of putting it everywhere i've got deeper bits of sand in these sections here and there and also in and amongst these round rocks here they're not round don't know why i said that but there's loads of room for some like plants there this is the s repens that's going to look great in like a section like that but basically i'm going to go for this whole sort of bank sections either side just full up with plants and then nice open foreground So S. Repens is an absolutely stunning foreground plant. It's so good. Just keep it on its own and make it a real focal point. And as I've said before, guys, in low tech tanks, it's always best to keep big clumps of plants together. I just find I have much better success doing it this way. Look at that. I just opened the lid off of this and it's just exploding out. I mean, how good is that plant? So, oh, I'm spilling it everywhere. Anyway, what I'm gonna try and do is keep these in big portions and so not split them up too much. I'll probably split this one into two and then I'm gonna place it right in this area here because I've got a really nice piece of needle leaf or you know um, trident uh, fern to go in this section. And I think the, the greenness of the trident fern there and then you know the pinkness of that right next to it in that section is gonna be really good for the eyes to see that really good for the eyes to see what does that even mean so trident fern is the smallest of the java fern family if you're going to be doing a small scape like this one it works really really well you'll be surprised actually how big normal java fern can get you can take over scape very quickly when i say quickly obviously i mean within months but <laughs> you get the idea now I'm not using too much Java Fern in this scape because obviously we want to be very stem heavy. Doing it this way means we can use up nutrients in the water very quickly, which in turn should stop any sort of algae growth. Oh yes, 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 yes. That's exactly what I'm trying to go for. Looking good, both on both sides. Again, looks a little bit weird at the moment because we're missing a ton of other plants. Still need to fill this section in. The middle section as well, I'm gonna bank it up a little bit at the back and just cover that area in hair grass. That's gonna look great. But I've got some Rotala HR here, which is the one that goes really red. Probably won't go really red under this light because we've, it's not like a high tech light or high powerful light, if you like, or high energy even. Um, but it's still gonna make them look really good. They'll probably go more of a sort of orangey yellow color and that's gonna look really good for just more variation. I'm gonna plant them in this section here near the top part of the bank. They will grow really tall and they will also grow out the water at some point as well. But again, you want them near the back because it's a, a background plant, it's gonna grow tall. Only short plants come in the foreground. So many people ask me that if the HR needs like CO2 or high tech, now that's not the case at all. It just will grow differently in those conditions than to how it's gonna grow in this one. So it's gonna grow a little bit sort of 
thinner leaves if you like and it's going to be less red but it will still grow nicely at the end of the day it's still a rotala species which is an easy plant to grow now i've also got some monte carlo here that it comes out of the pack just like that you know it just sits in one of these pots like that grows in the nutrient i'm going to keep it all together as one and i found a nice little spot i want it to go right here and just just pushing it in between the rocks there so that they sort of pinch it in place and that'll just grow really nicely there just leave it as it is and it will sort of spread its way out and that'll look really good i'll do again i'll do another one on this side probably in this area this area or here i'm not exactly sure yet because i want a load of plants coming in here right that's looking great to me so far yeah so i added this little pocket of monte carlo on this side that looks really cute now i'm just going to cover the whole lot now in hair grass like the background bit in the center i've got some of the long hair grass i'm going to put that in there and then the short stuff all coming forwards i'm still going to keep the foreground open but there's going to be little bits of details here and there i've also got all our details rock to add in at the moment as well but I'll do that after I've planted the plants because it's just easier So there is loads of little pockets of hair grass there. Now you might be questioning how they're gonna get nutrients. Effectively, this is just a completely inert substrate. It's just normal sand and gravel that I haven't put anything else into it. Now, because it's an ecosystem aquarium, we wanna keep the nutrient levels low and let them build up over time. And that's how we can get away with no water changes. So what will actually happen, and I know this because I've done it before and this is what happened before as well. Some of that hair grass will just die off. And for some, reason i can't explain <laughs> some of it will do really well and overall though it'll just over time just start spreading and going in its own directions that's kind of why i've planted more than i usually would is because i'm expecting some of it to die off some of it to do well just how it goes no idea why hey i'm not a scientist all right <laughs> is that the right word would it be a sign no herbologist that's the study of herbs surely i don't botanist botanist that's it isn't it botanist yeah i think so right that's enough plants for the minute let's fill this up with water i can add in some more detailed ones if i want to at that point but as always i'm gonna get the water from the discus tank which is looking terrible but that's fine i'm gonna be doing a whole makeover on it quite soon let's go and have a look so here is the discus tank it's looking absolutely terrible but that's okay because it's super healthy and we're gonna take some oh <laughs> boys are in a <laughs> what are you doing whoa <laughs> Oh no, Power Rangers mode. Anyway, yeah, let's get some of the water out of here. Well, you can see that I've got these plants ready to be put in the background. I want to take out all the long background stuff and then put these in the background. I think that's going to open up and look super fresh. Yes! <laughs> Whoa! Watch that. Okay, that's... Do we jump on the sofa though? No. <laughs> We're looking good so far, but I've only gone and forgotten the Hydrocottle Japan again, haven't I? I just spat everywhere. <laughs> so I can add that in now. Also, there's a load of gaps and areas that are standing out more to me now for some reason that there's water in it. So I'm going to add in some of the uh, Limnophila I've got down in the tank storage tank, the storage, plant storage tank. And they're just going to fill out some of those gaps like in this section here and on this side as well. There's oh, so hard to show you. Down there in that section, there's loads missing. So let's just get more plants, just more, more. And then we can start adding the fish because I'm going to be doing a fish in cycle again. I've also got a little filter that's got a bit of the, the sponge from another tank. So it's kind of like pre-cycled if you like, but you know, we're only adding two fish to start with anyway. Oh, that's looking really good now. See, I've added a few little pieces there extra of Limnophila, just because they give it that really sort of vibrant green look that I really like as well. Mixed in with the color, you know, that looks really good, doesn't it? And now we've got our filter to add. So we've got this tiny little thing here. Look, it's not really gonna be doing any sort of biological filtration at all. It's all mechanical, just a little bit of water movement and I'm gonna drop, ah! So look, it's just gonna sit 
on this little corner pit here like that i'll probably tuck it back a little bit to be fair you won't even see it eventually when all the sort of stems and that grow over that way but look you can barely see it and it's just going to provide a little bit of water flow in that front area i mean it is still a filter so it is a filtered tank but come on i mean <laughs> is that really going to be doing anything still so i have done this sort of setup before without a filter completely but you know this tiny little thing here i've got it i'm going to use it but this is going to fill in and look absolutely brilliant oh he's popped up get back in there okay let's get that filter on And we are away guys. I mean, currently I'm, I'm floor gang, but you know, who don't want to be floor gang, right? But this is looking great already. But what kind of ecosystem tank would it be if it didn't have the floating plants? Now I'm going to use a mixture of floating plants. I've got that awesome water lettuce just dotted around everywhere at the moment. And I've got duckweed. Duckweed is really good for a tank setup like this. You know, in recent months, duckweed has become the bane of my life, a pain in the butt. But for something like this, it will work absolutely perfect. And fortunately, we have loads of it. Look at that lot. It's, <laughs> it's like a little swimming pool of green. <laughs> so yeah, there's the water lettuce, obviously, mini water lettuce, and there's the duckweed. So I don't want to use too much because I don't want to cover the surface of the new aquarium. I just want to have it so that it's in certain areas and then let it grow itself to cover the surface and then remove and that's how you can exp export all the sort of waste from the tank and that's why you don't need to do water changes because you're still taking out all the nitrates and that sort of thing through the exploitation of the duckweed So I think we can all agree that that looks awesome. Uh, well, if you don't agree, then screw you, right? Screw you and your opinions. No, but even if you don't like it, I mean, it's gonna grow in really, really thick at the top. I need to stop saying thick, don't I? But yeah, like it's already converted really well at the top here. These plants are like, they're not dried out at all. Look, they're actually doing really good, which is a really good sign that it's just gonna continue doing well. We've got some Rotala poking out on the other side as well. There's lots more to come from this one. I haven't gone too crazy on the planting in the different, you know, sort of areas like here over this side and over this side because that's going to grow in really quick in no time like as i trim stems i'll be replanting them and that's just going to get crazy very shortly you won't even be able to see into these sections at all now i was going to be adding fish this episode but i've decided not to because there could be a possibility that i'm going to get something different from somewhere that you'll, you'll find out more in the coming videos but um, something's cool is coming so it's worth the wait So that is the tank pretty much finished, but you know, is a tank really ever finished until the fish are in there? Probably not. But like I said, we've got that coming up. I don't want to spoil it and rush that bit. So next video, we'll have a really cool one on adding the fish and also a few more details. So if you're not liked, not hit the subscribe yet, do so now and I will see you on the next one.